Hey everybody, Jill Janice here with Comics Beer and Sci-Fi on our first all ever official Geek Girls podcast. Joining me, I have my gamer girl, Sarah Sadowski. Hi. And I have our Able Ideas model chick, Salik Kayla Alvarez. And we are going to jump right in. So we are the only geek girls in a predominantly all-male society. So we're going to give our little views and perspective on things. So we're going to jump right in. So one thing that I'm passionate about, and I think we have all have watched, grown up with, know, we share with our children, Disney. Disney princesses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We all know them. We all love them. I mean, I think that there was a there was a time in my life where I definitely idolized a lot of the Disney princesses, um, mainly being a ginger in, you know, being a minority. <laughs> um, I know even my mom wasn't didn't accept the fact that I was a ginger for most of my life, and like looking up to Ariel and being like, she's kind of like me. And um, of course. and and then when I was older understanding the plot line of the Disney movies, especially like with Little Mermaid, um, the the underlining theme of, of the woman constantly being in distress or being unable to rescue herself um, or changing herself for a man. And I, I remember having kind of a little bit of a, like a bummed out moment, I think, kind of being like, okay, sweet. So this really strong female that I thought was really cool and strong, changed herself completely, didn't talk, had to like use her body language, like Ursula said, um, to get this guy to kiss her in three days. And if she didn't get him to kiss her in three days, then, you know, then she's completely, she's, she's, she's back to, you know, being a slave to Ursula, right? And um, I know like the Hans Christian uh, Andersen version of The Little Mermaid isn't any better. I mean, it's brutal, it's it's gruesome. And you know, you don't realize this actually watching, while you're watching yeah, it, you and don't. growing up, you love Ariel, you know, uh, but then when you really <laughs> watch it, it's like here she falls in love with a guy and it's so superficial because she doesn't know him, Mm-mm. and it's all based upon image. And he's so fine. Oh, he's playing, you know, whatever piccolo or something. He's so cute. Oh, I have to have him. Which is it's it's common in on in today's society in real life. You know, we right. we meet people that we find maybe physically attractive and yeah. try to change how we are to, you know, fit their um, expectations so we can be accepted. And it's not fair as a woman and as a girl growing up, even, you know, with my children now, they love Ariel, they love Pocahontas. And it's sad that most of these storylines, it, it, and, you know, our life, we all try to fall in love and go that route. But sometimes life doesn't play those cards for you. And right. I love that Disney is starting to open up the other different um, conflicts and um, what would you say, complexity of the world, as you will, um, with life, as in Frozen. Yeah, that's what I was going right. to say. I feel like yes. Disney's kind of evolving. It is. Well, I feel like Disney and, you know, the the sci-fi, Marvel, all of, you know, the different science fiction, they're all evolving, whereas women, they're starting to, it's starting, they're starting to portray um, a different type of love, you know, things that are more yes. significant, things that are more important. And, I you know, with that. Frozen, I thought it was a really big um, icebreaker for them because it completely... Inter- That's kind of funny. Frozen had oh, an yeah. icebreaker. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> but um, it was. I mean, I feel like once Disney kind of put that movie out and everyone just watched it and fell in love with it, it was like, wow, it completely opened the door to a whole different realm. And I think they did they did a wonderful job with that. I think we need to see more of that. I love like Brave, another ginger, Sarah. I know. It's Um, so exciting. (laughs) That you know, they try to categorize us girls to try to fit us in these pretty little prissy dresses and we don't. We wanna fight. Yeah, you know, no, we want to we want to show our strength. We want to show our wisdom and our courage and our mentality and our right. personality. You know, we're not just we're not just a pretty face. Well, and I hate too. <laughs> you like, know, we have we have a brain. Yes, and I think that like sometimes too, like a lot of these storylines have 
these daughters talking back to their fathers and the fathers are like, nope, you're a woman, just get back there, mind your own business, you're a lady, do this, do that. And it's like, no, you know what? Like, I remember as a female listening to like Party of World or listening or like understanding, you know, uh, you know, like maybe he's right. Maybe there is something the matter with me. And it's like, why is it, why is it that a woman is billed that there's something wrong with her for wanting something different than the life that she's been raised in. Right. It's not, it's not, there's nothing wrong. It's okay. Whereas like men are celebrated to go out and do something different and mm-hmm. break the mold. It's like, no, 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 you're a lady. Absolutely. We've already figured out right. who you're supposed to be. Right. Just be that way. Don't, don't right. tossle anything. Right. You know, and one of my all time favorites that is not brand new, but newer is Maleficent. Oh, yeah. I love that movie because it, of all the movies that have touched me, that movie actually made me cry because it was like she had here she was looking for her true love in a man, and all along it was in her mother type figure role who truly loved her. You know, it wasn't the guy who truly mm-hmm. loved her. He didn't truly love her. He truly loved her beauty, mm-hmm. maybe. Right. You know, but not her. And I think that was a great message. You know, I love watching that movie. I sh- I'll share it with my children, right. you know, to show my daughter. You don't need to believe that a man is going to love you. My love is going to be enough, you know? Right. Right. I love that. So here we are. We're the geek girls of the society, and we're going to put our foot down. You know, we've had it. This is it. We're going to break through, you know? Mm -hmm. We need to see more girls in our gamer world. Sarah, I want to talk to you about that. Well, you know, it's interesting. So I have a a really strong, actually, a psychology background. I have my degree in psychology and... um, and, and by the way, we are all very educated women as well, um, which is very, I think, a really important thing to state. Um, but we, you know, I, when I was in psychology, um, I learned about this study in, in my social psychology class. Um, and it was about following women as in their adolescent time and how they were so interested, you know, before like age 14 in science and math biology, zoology, veterinary science, stuff like that. And then suddenly it just kind of dissipates. And it's like, well, why? Oh, well, suddenly there's puberty. Puberty. You yep. Suddenly puberty. the boys are telling you, oh, you look pretty, or oh, you should wear makeup. And suddenly all of the magazines have those pressures. And then, oh, I don't want to be a mathematician anymore. I don't want to be a scientist. I want to be a model. Yeah, it's exactly. Not, you know, it's not, it's cool doesn't look... You don't get the praise for it that you would if you were a supermodel or if you were some somebody of, right. of importance because of your beauty. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. I, I'm completely passionate about um, women and especially especially our little girls. You know, growing up and and knowing you know their self worth and knowing that they can be whoever they want. They're not. They shouldn't be kept in a box because right. they are you know girls. Especially. Just, and I know. Right. Kayla, you just had a daughter, yeah. and I have a daughter as well, and I, I'm sure, Sarah, when, one day when you have a daughter, Maybe, you're yeah. going to share these same you know, views. We're going to share our same traditions. We all love The Little Mermaid. We all love you know, Pocahontas, Esmeralda, all these characters, and here they're s- trapped in these you know, expectations that society put a box on women. Right. And it's sad that, you know, I have to say, my favorite character, Ariel, is, you know... She's still <laughs> trapped in this world, right. right? you know? It's sad. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, now you met the love of your life, but you have to leave all of your sisters and your father behind, which I know they kind of tried to, like, get back in in the sequels, and it didn't ever work. The sequels never. Yeah, great. but it's They're like, okay, it's like she's, you know, waving goodbye. And, like, I, under- I understand that, like, yeah, you're waving goodbye to your family and stuff, but it's like, why does it have to be so segmented that way? And and you did bring up a good point, like, with video games and stuff, you know, to segue into that a little bit. Like, I, I think that now it seems like there's a little bit of a swing towards more female-fronted character video games Absolutely, um, yeah. and movies where they're actually I. being... I.e. Tomb Raider. Yep, which Tomb Raider. Was one of my mm-hmm. all-time favorites. And I'm not a huge gamer, but I did love the games and the movies. I mean, yeah. And, yeah. and transitioning from a game to a movie is hard in itself. Right. And then to have a female lead, she, right. like, broke records with that. Right. And, yeah, she was she was over-sexualized in the game, but you know what? Back you know, Angelina movie. Jolie mm-hmm. is pretty much absolutely the body type. I mean, there the were scenes type. of her naked. Yeah. And it's almost sad to say, would have the movie been as successful if it wasn't? Yeah. You know, and it's sad to say that 
with women, it's it's such a borderline, fragile thing. It's almost like if we don't expose what makes us a woman, then we're not going to sell. And it's not fair because, you know, there are some great things in Tomb Raider. And with Angelina Jolie dressed, right. she's amazing. Yes. yes. Do we have to see her naked? Right. Granted, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, yeah. you know, we do we have to be sexualized with right. everything we do? No. Right. I don't think so. And I, I mean, there's... There are, you know, there's, I feel like there's a trend in video games. I don't know necessarily, I mean, I feel like, I don't remember her name, but the, the beautiful woman that is um, the front of Wonder Woman. Um, Gal Gadot, I believe her name is. Yeah, she's, she's gorgeous. And one of the things that I really, because video games are my thing. I love, I love, you know, comics and I love sci-fi and I do that, but I really obsess over video games. That's just my jam. And, um... But, you know, when I was watching, I saw, I think it was Logan or King Kong or something. It was Kong Skull Island, I think. It was a couple weeks ago. And they had a trailer for Wonder Woman. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is incredible because she's a normal looking girl. It's not, it's not, you know, she, but the special effects and everything that they've done, she looks like she's totally kicking ass. Mm -hmm. And I respect that, but she's just a, she's just a normal looking girl. And that's what I really appreciate. And even though like Lara Croft, you know, Angelina Jolie's body, natural body type is like that. And that's fantastic. And I do think that there is something very empowering about the fact that you can be sexy and be super powerful and still kick some butt. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, why do they always have to be that it way? It should be. It's like there's a Like when we look at line. Deadpool. Yeah. Look at you look know, at and it's like He's squad. still sexy. Look at how they did not, Harley Quinn. Yeah. I was so upset. I'm not going to lie. Margot Robbie, I'm a fan. She did a great job. Yes. But the costume really did her shorts have to be that short. Right. She could have wore leggings. I mean, she could have wore anything. Did her ass cheeks have to hang out? Like, mm-hmm. she was sexy without that. Right. And right. She, her character was badass. She was the only character who doesn't have, like, a superpower or, like, you know, there's the lizard who's intimidating or all these characters. Deadshot has his thing. Harley Quinn's just crazy. Right. So, right. I mean, she's crazy. Did you have to make her sexy with it? I mean, really... That was disappointing to me, and I'm a huge Harley Die Hard fan. Yeah. So that was just upsetting to me. And then just thinking about it in an overall, with the DC world, um, and I heard a rumor from, I'm not going to mention any names, name drop, Q, uh, <laughs> mentioned <laughs> that they're not going to make a Captain Marvel movie if the Wonder Woman fails. And I honestly don't think it's going to fail because I, I think it can. not only... No. Are us girls excited? I think all the guys are just as excited. Right. I mean, the music it alone fantastic. gets you hyped up. But she's the yeah, gal. She did an amazing job. I can't wait to see it. But we need Captain Marvel. I mean, they're and it's a female this time, and we need that. I think yeah. I think we need that. We need that. Yeah, <laughs> we don't I think eliminate we do. our yeah. options to I have more females do. in. The comic book world, it's right. not fair. I mean, if you look at Justice League, we only have Wonder Woman. Right. And then in the cartoon, I mean, we did have Hawkgirl, which is one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. We did have, um, what's the um, cat girl? She dated Green Lantern. I can't think of her name. But we would had other female characters, and it's not fair that on the big screen, we have 2% of a yes. shot to right. show that a woman's role is worth showing on the right. big screen. Right, and that's the thing, too, with video games is that a lot of these video games, yeah, you can play as a female, but you're playing a male storyline as a female, and there's been enough... And, and, you know, I know we are talking about different stuff to talk about t- today, and I'm thinking, like, strong video game women. And, and yes, there limited. are some, yeah. but honestly, my favorite characters to play up till now have been men. And it's like, is that because of me? Or is it because there just haven't been strong ones? I'm sorry, but Princess, Princess Peach I mean, and is if you not look a strong at your female options character. For when you go to the store and you pick a video game. For example, I mean, they're predominantly male games. You have right. NBA games. You have NFL games. You have NHL games. You have all of those line of games. All of the war games. Battlefront, which is, yep. you know, um, you've got Call of, Duty, Call of Duty. All of those, you know, FPS games. You are on the front lines killing people, and even like in Skyrim, you can play as a woman. And what's really cool in Skyrim, in Elder Scrolls Skyrim, is that even though you play as a woman, there's different things about that. It's a brilliant game for anyone who hasn't played it. 
But basically, um, so whatever you're good at, you just get better at. So if you want to be a thief and you're constantly sneaking, your sneak level will go up. Well, there's other things that are cool about it. Like if you're male, there's certain attributes that you don't get as a female. One of the things I noticed, though, if you are a female in the game, you can persuade men. Way easier if you're a thief or a assassin. Well, um, and that works with men as well, but it... It, one of the things when I saw that, I was like, well, I'm going to be a female. Because automatically, if I'm a female in this game, that means that I could get extra stuff because of the fact that I can have that little and bit of an up. And you sway men. Yeah. Right. And most of the vendors and most of the people that are in the games are automatically male. So it's like, well, of course I'm going to be a female in the game. And I was really happy about that. But at the same time, there's that slight bit of sex. It's like, is it sexism or is it reality? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Because the reality is men and wi- women typically, you know, it's still to, to today, the majority is that men and women flirt and, and want to have those kinds of interactions together. And it, that's just how it works. Um, one of the really cool things is that I'm seeing more and more female storylines coming through. Uh, it looks like the new Uncharted um, the new Uncharted uh, uh, video game that's going to be coming out shortly in, I think it's, uh, it might be Q3 of this year, um, is a female storyline. Uh, one of the games that I'm playing right now is called Horizon Zero Dawn, and that is uh, fronted by a female named Aloy. She was fantastic. One of the best games that I've played in decades, literally decades. And I've been hearing this from men, too. Now, what's the storyline? The storyline is um, a post-apocalyptic world, okay. but it's almost like post-post. Okay. So, you know, basic, not to give anything away, basically, the the world has gotten to a point where androids and everything. I think we discussed this game before. Yeah. And I was interested, and I was captivated by the fact that it was a female lead. Yes. And coming from somebody who's not typically a gamer, that kind of grasp my interest and I right. think we need more things like that it's not really fair that everything is directed toward a boy right you know I have a daughter she likes to game she might like that yeah and there's certain things as, as a female as I'm playing that I notice like it's not called armor they're called outfits you can modify the oh, outfits gosh. but it's just like things that guys aren't even yeah. realizing but as a woman I'm like oh, okay they're outfits that makes sense because it's not, they have, it's a woven, like it's a fabric as opposed to like a metal sometimes. Sometimes they are. Um, but you can choose an emotional response instead of just choosing a response. They say an emotional response, which I find, I, like I said, I don't know if this is necessarily uh, something that Sony has done um, specifically, but stuff that I've noticed that I appreciated. Um, a- Aloy is um, normal looking. Like, as, like, if I saw her on the street, I'd just be like, she just looks like a cool girl. Uh, she's she's beautiful, but she's not, like, makeup done or anything. She has a couple dreadlocks. She's a redhead, which I appreciate. <laughs> um, but, you know, she, she has boobs, but are they massive? No, they're just proportionate. She's got a little bit of muscle. She's leaner. I her like outfits it don't right. show it's too relatable. much. Right. Yeah, she's in just a normal outfit. Um, you know, it's, like, normal meaning, like, her boobs aren't showing. Her butt's not her showing. Her isn't chiseled with, like, right. gigormous titties and a small waist. <laughs> right, exactly. Like she has butt- abs. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like she. It, so basically, the storyline is that it's a post post apocalyptic world. The world is overrun by um, the metal world is overrun by robots somehow. Uh, I'm not going to give it away. And um, basically, everybody just kind of, you know, it, it, everybody dies somehow. And there's only a small human population that survives. And that sur- that group is a matriarchal society. There are some patriarchal society, but Aloy's tribe is um, matriarchs. So it's completely run by women. But she's an outcast because they don't understand where she came from. And basically, she's trying to find her mom. She's trying to figure out what's going on with why, she, why so many people automatically hated her at birth. And she's an extremely strong person, but she still treats people with compassion. She still, she's, you know, she's a really awesome fighter and has all these really, but it makes me proud to be a woman. And even though it seems super silly, I remember after a couple days of playing it, I'm sitting there like, 
scraping ice off my car. I see a guy shoveling, and I'm like, man, I don't have any gloves. I'm freezing my butt off. Maybe I can see if he'll just scrape off my windshield for me. And I was like, and I literally said to myself, what are you doing? Yeah, I was like, I was like, what are you doing? You're a woman. You can handle this. Yeah. I'm like, we have to deal with pregnancy, periods, all this like crazy stuff. Edit point, edit point. Right, right. (laughs) But it's like, and it's like, but for some reason, our society makes us think that we just aren't able to do things and that we should always be reaching out for help. And it's cool to actually play these roles or see these roles being played of strong women and being like, you know what? Speaking I do of that, it. I want to use that to transition to our top favorites. Yes. So mm-hmm. I have a few top favorites that have kind of embodied the whole sexual image. Plus, I'm a badass Biatch. <laughs> and I will whoop some ass if I have to type of role. So who has the whole persona of what guys want to see and the kick butt that girls want to see. Right. So a few top favorites that I have, um, Scarlett Johansson, obviously, yeah, Black yeah, Widow. Yeah. She's nailed it from the beginning of the whole Russian agent. I love it. Kick ass from the beginning to now. Can't go wrong. Black Widow. Yeah. No, Number she's two, fantastic. I've got... Natalie Portman, Mm -hmm. she's played in Star Wars, she played in Thor, she's Mm -hmm. one of my all-time favorites, she's gorgeous without makeup, gorgeous with, and she's embodied that whole, I'm a badass, I'm going to stand for what I believe in, with crazy makeup and crazy hair, i.e. Star Wars, my favorite, Yeah, and she totally embodied that. I'm beautiful without being sexy, and I'm a badass. Yeah. Right. Um, we've also got here, I listed uh, Elizabeth Olsen, which was a surprise to me because I'm not a big Olsen sister fan, but their older sister played Scarlet Witch in Avengers. Oh, yeah. I think she totally kicked ass. Yeah. I mean, and I was watching a few interviews on her, and she had to do a lot of her acting with no one around, totally green screen pretending to whip up powers and do all this crazy right. stuff and just be focused and look pretty while doing it. Yeah. You have to look pretty while you do this. I mean, really? Yeah. Really. I know. You know? I know. And she nailed it. I know. Yep. You know? Fantastic. So, um, Gal got it. I mean, and, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, Wonder Woman. Yep. Like, I mean, I get hyped even when I hear the theme music like, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> like, I know Wonder Woman's coming, and I know she's going to kick ass, and she's going to kick Batman's ass and Superman because she's better than everybody. Like, I just, like, you look at Justice League, and it's like, okay, guys, and Wonder Woman. Like, there's no other yeah, woman. Right. It's Wonder Woman. She's all we got. Hope for her. Yeah. You know, on well, the big screen, at least. How do you feel about Ellen Ripley from Alien? Sigourney oh, I Weaver? Love that. Yeah, I love that. Such an amazing, and I know so many men that are our age that idolize Sigourney Weaver because of that role Mm -hmm. is so sexy and everything and it's just like she was just no makeup crazy hair like kind of bad hair but still just thin but she was a strong woman Mm -hmm. strong woman Charlize Theron and um I love uh Prometheus Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. she's like uh abort mission uh this shit and then they all die. You know, yeah. I should have listened to the strong woman. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What, do you have any uh, favorites that you like? Yes. I like, I am a big fan of Storm. Right. Yes. I think that um, as a minority, I'm Puerto Rican, seeing a lot of, like, colored skin is not normal it's not common yeah, you're right. in you know the comic book world and it's so it's like women is so scarce and then you have a colored woman it's like it's a rarity in its right. form and it's like i was kind of you know i was on the internet and i was kind of browsing around just kind of looking at the whole range of different like female ones and then i kind of started deep digging deeper and it's like well how many of these super you know heroes female Mutants, villains whatever. have um you know have tan skin are not tall, blonde, and blue eyes. Or, you know, they they all look the same. They all are over 5'7". They're all skinny. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, yeah. you know, it's it, it's hard to, to kind of find and pick out, you know, where the minorities fit in mm-hmm. because it's like they don't look like us. Yeah. So it's like with Storm, she's darker skin, you know, she's beautiful, she's strong, and it's like kind of just it gives, you know, uh, something right. to kind of look to and that's right. why like I really idolized um, Catwoman and the new with Halle Berry mm-hmm. like the way that she portrayed it and you know having her now even though role. Catwoman 
was not the best movie. No, it wasn't the best movie. But, but it was I a did great movie. Halle which Berry. we and talked about this movie before with the guys. How that Catwoman wasn't the greatest movie, mm-hmm. but it was a good, strong movie, especially for girls to show that hey, there's an independent woman. She's working, and this crazy stuff happened to her life. Now she's Catwoman, but she's strong, right. and she's independent, mm-hmm. she came out of it stronger. and she's not your typical woman that you would see be on the big screen. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So she's that's another one. Harley Quinn, of course. Of course. I just I just love her. I mean, she just channels my inner crazy. So it's like I love how Margot <laughs> Robbie nailed like I'm sexy and my ass is hanging out, but turn around with the bat like I'll still whoop your yeah. ass yeah. yeah she nailed it with being sexy and diverse crazy. enough to be crazy <laughs> right exactly she's crazy yes. and I, was, I really hope that I'm, I hear rumors of another movie coming out for Suicide Squad I really hope that they don't over sexualize her so I much know. you know and in and, and Boston we did the all the Harley Quinn girls and everybody yeah. said the same thing we love her no matter what but do we really have to over sexualize her right. Wait, why can't she just normal. wear pants I right. like her original costume <laughs> like a jumpsuit <laughs> yes. or something like yeah. if there's other ways yeah I do can. too you know? I was a little bummed when they got rid of that because I, that's what I remember watching on like Cartoon Network and stuff. I remembered watching, you know, the Joker series and seeing her and being like, you know, I, I thought it was cute. I thought it was neat yeah. and it wasn't like super revealing and she was just kind of we like. We have other characters that are made to be sexy, i.e. Right. Poison Ivy. Her cartoon right. character is yes. sexual. She's right. supposed to be. She's designed that way. She's our sexy vixen. Right. You know, let Harley Quinn be the crazy one. Right. You know, we need to see more of that. We need to see more diversity in our exactly. women. And we're the geek girls here to tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Um, well, you know, I think, um, I think I think we touched pretty much base on everything. And to wrap it up, since we've been over-sexualized, sexualized, I don't even want to say that word anymore. Um, but I think it's our turn. I think that it's our turn to kind of turn the tables. And it's your guys' turn. So I want to hear your top favorite characters for our male role leads in our um, movies here. So, you know, you've got Thor. Yes. Yes, I love Thor. Oh, oh and Which, Captain who America. makes long hair and a cape and a hammer look hot? I would have never thought. Mr. Hemsworth, that and lay that oh, hammer on me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, he is so fine. I like, like Captain America, too. He's like one of my favorite, too. Captain America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know what's funny is I would have never thought Thor was attractive in like the cartoon roles or any other role until way. Mr. Hemsworth played mm-hmm. him. And now I'm like, Thor comes on, I'm like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Captain yep. America. Yeah. Yep. Captain America, I think, is really cute. Not when he was super skinny. When he beefed up, I like that You more. know who I added to our list since we've seen Kong? Loki. Yes. I never thought he was hot until no. I seen him in Kong. Yes. And I was like, dude, him with blonde hair? Mm-hmm. Dude. Absolutely. Total different person. Absolutely. I'm like, I would love to see him play another character. Maybe not necessarily a villain, but maybe somebody else in the whole Avengers world. Mm-hmm. I just think he's he's underestimated. I think so too. I really like the Doctor from Doctor Who. I like uh, the Eleventh Doctor specifically, but I really like the idea of being able to kind of like travel all of time and space with a guy that will never be with you. But I mean, you're, you you have an expiration <laughs> that's, date. That's he like a little bit of reality. You <laughs> might die. Yeah, no, it's like the perfect man. It's like the it's like what every guy wishes, right? Um, or at least what we think. But no, I mean, he's he's able to scoop up these companions and kind of travel around, show them all this cool stuff, pull the Aladdin, I can show you the world kind of stuff, and then at the end of the day, just drop you off of his at, at your doorstep if he wants to, or you know, you get eaten by an alien. But you know, that's not his problem. But no, I mean, there's some. Something very sexy about this really in- intelligent, incredible man who's just going to show you everything. But you know, and and and, the, and at, at the same time too, I feel like Doctor Who's really great because their female roles are always very strong too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, Rose Tyler and Amy Pond, the tenth and eleventh Doctor um, series. Uh, they, you know, they're very strong women, and they they speak up, they talk back, they fight well. You know, they they have good morals. And and those are really good women to you know to look up to as well, which which makes me you know find the doctor even sexier because that's what he likes in the women, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Right. And uh, thank you for joining me on our first all girl yeah. geek podcast. Thanks, Jill. It's been so much Ooh, fun. I know I had so much fun. <laughs> and we'll Sarah, see you guys, Kayla. Soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.